Welcome back. So the day has come. Fab has officially launched and it came, it was supposed to come in the middle of October. It came a little bit on the later side. I'm assuming they might have run into some issues. Uh, I do believe that they intended to be released uh, previous week, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, regardless, this is what it looks like. So to navigate here, you can just type in fab.com and you'll reach this place. And uh, let's just get to the most important thing that most people are after. How do you get your Quixel scan assets? Well, it's very easy. You just scroll down here to your Quixel Mega Scans for free. Previously, you could have used like uh, GitHub or other tools to, to get the, um, the assets downloaded so that they were claimed to your account. But there's a much easier way uh, presented here by Quixel themselves. You just click on the claim button here, claim free Mega Scans, and now it belongs to you. All of these assets are now available in the Quixel profile. So this is the Quixel section of Fab. So you can see we have a bunch of different things available to us here now. So if you click on any of them, you can see that we are uh, owning it sort of. Well, it literally says own. And now you can download and get it in whatever format you want. So you have to, of course, get uh, the license agreement agreed upon and such things. But that's essentially the whole part of claiming the mega scans. It's, it's super easy. It's one click and it's connected to the account that you're connected uh, into. Now, let's talk a little bit about Fab in general. So if we go to Fab, this is the start section. And in here we have the general categorization of a few different things. We can see the featured free content. You can scroll down and you can get some categories like environments and tools and free content and smart assets, etc. etc. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to navigate uh, in this marketplace now, and it's not entirely for Unreal Engine users. It's meant to be a sort of um, collective hub for a bunch of different game engines or softwares that you make use of. So you can go to search here, you can see you can explore depending on game engines. So you can click Unity, for example, you'll start to get uh, uh, Unity assets. Clicking in on one of these, we can uh, use as an example to see what kind of information we have available to us. We can see here over here uh, the creator of the asset. You can click in on the creator and see what other assets they have presented. You have a bunch of different uh, information how you can filter it to get what you're specifically after. Uh, you also have the categories that it's breadcrumbing to to see what it belongs to. And you have something called the license. So the license is something that has changed a bit from the marketplace that we're used to uh, for Unreal Engine. And that is that if you click here on the drop down, you get uh, two options in this case. There can be more than that. Uh, you have a personal one, which is essentially for uh, indie devs and uh, smaller groups and uh, you, you see here that individual creators or small teams not making more than 100,000 uh, the last 12 months. So there is a good and a bad for this. The good is of course that uh, some assets can be more easily available to you if you're just doing something for a hobby or if you're a small project that doesn't generate a lot of revenue from it. Uh, it can be nice to get a more cheap option available to you. Uh, because the professional one, of course, as it says, is for uh, groups that are exceeding a certain amount of revenue. Um, so, so there's a monetary incentive for this. Uh, although not everybody will have a differentiation between these. And I also believe that there is a, uh, a reference one uh, which you can use as sort of uh, like if you're only just not trying to do a commercial project at all. Uh, let's see if we can find something like that as we go along. But something to be aware of that uh, the creators can set different licenses on their products now as well. Uh, then there's I have some uh, other information here. Uh, something that is pretty neat uh, in these times of AI. Uh, a lot of people have a different uh, points of view and uh, some like and some dislike AI and related to that. So uh, you can actually have categories. You can actually see the information if someone needs to present if something has been generated with AI or not. And they can also set a permission if they would allow their assets to be used as training data 
uh, for AI as well, as long as uh, their licensing and their age rating. So the license you can click and you can see what the actual license uh, is, is for this. Uh, we won't be spending more time on that for now. In addition to that, you have the same as before. You have your description of uh, the asset where you can read whatever information that creator has presented with. Uh, you can see a bunch of different formats that are available. In this case, we have both Unreal Engine, we have Unity, we have FPX and we have GLB. You can see the formats here as well uh, with uh, details or in this case, lack of details. But yeah, so here you can see some information about that um, <clears throat> you also have some tags and stuff like that and then related items as well so uh, the thing that sticks out of course here is we don't see a rating for this one no rating um, all the assets will need to have at least five review ratings or star reviews star ratings let's call them star ratings before any rating appears so if you have less than five it won't show up and then when you have five the average of that amount will be showing as your actual rating. Um, for now, there doesn't seem to be a um, a um, section for the reviews in text themselves. I was hoping that that would actually be included. It seems that it might not be. So that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, let's navigate to a different asset here and see. Let's go to 3D models, for example. So let's see, I'm after something. Well, first of all, let's check this one a little bit quickly. We can see that everything has been uh, categorized in different groupings. Now, these groupings are very nice to have to get the specific thing that you're after. Uh, the problem with this is, I think, is uh, the creators themselves get to choose what category they are in. Uh, so if we go to something like a smart asset, we expect something that's a little bit cleverly done, maybe helping systems or things like that. but you can just as easily just find someone that puts a 3D model here, like this over here, which is not a smart asset in my opinion, but in this case it happens to be a modular asset and therefore maybe the creator thought it was a smart asset in some aspect. So there's a bit of interpretation being done here, which might be a little bit problematic for a person that's trying to find something, but Let's disregard that for now. Anyway, so if we go to 3D models, for example, we can see that we have a bunch of different stuff here. We can click on something like this uh, leopard or cheetah or whatever it might have been. And we load in some information. Now, the marketplace is supposed to be this like conglomerate uh, amalgamation of all the different marketplaces it has uh, accrued to uh, make, which means that uh, you get a bunch of information that is available or was available in uh, the other marketplaces, in this case, like Sketchfab. Sketchfab had the ability to, if this wants to load, uh, to preview a 3D model so you can twist and turn it and see it from different angles and see a bunch of different animations, no, not animations, information about it. Uh, something does not seem to be wanting to load. Maybe there's a lot of load because it's just came out, I'm not entirely sure. Um, that didn't seem to have helped either. Anyway, so you still have that possibility uh, now. So you can load up your, your, your 3D model and you can see a bunch of different uh, information about it and you can turn it around uh, from different angles. It seems we will not be able to be showing that off. But that is available here. You have a bunch of different buttons. You can see things like, uh, actually, now we get it. Okay, so we have our model. We can turn it around, see what it looks like, which is good if you want to preview a model, of course. Um, you have some things like wireframes you can set off. Uh, you can see some different materials like roughness, base colors, and uh, normals. So you can see a comparison, or you can click in on these and have two different ones being compared that might be of reference or relevance to you and sort of get a, an idea for uh, if this meets the standards that you're after. Anyway, yeah, continuing. So this is essentially what we're going to be making use of now. Now, the normal thing to do when you have been using the Unreal Marketplace launcher for a long time now, it's probably, oh, I want to see all of my stuff in my library, and you click in here. 
and you expect to see your things here. However, you will, by the time you're watching this, most likely not be able to see anything here. And uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is intended or not. Uh, I do believe and hope that they will be transferring all of your assets from your previous account to here. But as you can see here, I have nothing. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not sure if they will completely abandon their vault or how that will be working. Uh, this might just be some slight bugs from it being just launched, you know, and, and they might be fixing it in a couple of days. So we'll have to wait and see what this uh, actually turns out to be, but uh, that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, but when it comes to the actual asset browsing, I believe that we have actually made some pretty big strides because uh, if you were to look for something specific, let's say you wanted to look for F VFX or something, you have these filter options here that are much more precise now than they were before. You can uh, show if you want to have mature things shown or not, and if they should be supposed to be blurred. You can remove things that are completely created with AI if that's not something that you want to consider. You can uh, disregard things that are not allowing them to be used as training data if that's something of interest for you. You have publish dates, you have ratings, you have the different license types. You can see if it wants to, you want to see the, the things that are for sale or not, so the discounted things. You can put up price ranges for what is interesting for you. You can do download sizes and formats. There's a bunch of different options depending on what you're looking for here. So you can really narrow down to find results that are fitting for your specific needs. And that's really nice. The problems, of course, with Fab so far seem to be uh, my library, not having the, the items that should be connected to your account, and we having lost the text reviews on assets, which can be very beneficial as a potential consumer to purchase something, right? Uh, because a star rating is a little bit uh, inflexible. You can read a little bit too much into it. Maybe a seller says that you need to put a five star rating if you want to have support on their Discord channel or something like that. Or, uh, you know, it, there's, there's no transparency on what those star ratings mean. Um, and that is problematic as a consumer. I do believe, however, that this marketplace is intended to mature and grow far beyond what the previous one uh, was able to do. So I do think that this is just a matter of uh, features that will come in time. Anyway, hopefully this was useful to you. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.